Hi. This first tune we're going to play is called Bistro Fada. It's written by a composer named Stephen Remble. And this, we selected this song because it was written and performed in the style of Django Reinhardt. And, you know, Django was um, one of the early major jazz talents to come from Europe. Uh, he had, um, he was born in Belgium and worked in France a lot. And along with his partner, Stefan Grappelli, who was an American violinist, they established the Hot Club of Paris. And so this style that they would play in the 1930s and 40s primarily uh, became known as Gypsy Jazz, guitar and violin. An amazing style and sound. And of course, Django was uh, also known to have uh, lost the use of his third and fourth fingers in his left hand due to a fire when he was 18. So he would really had two fingers uh, on his left hand to use. And, you know, he really just was able to play so much guitar uh, with just those two fingers and um, actually developed a whole kind of unique technique and style and manner to navigate the neck of the guitar with just the, the first and second finger. So um, pretty admirable, great musician, wonderful, dynamic individual. So this is a tune called Bistro Fada. It was actually written for a movie called Midnight in Paris, which was released in 2011. And uh, it's about an American tourist in Paris who becomes fascinated with the art and literature of the jazz age in the 1920s in Paris. So hope you enjoy this song. Thank you.
We thought it would be a good time to play a song by Chet Atkins, the amazing guitar player from Tennessee, the country gentleman, as he was known. And uh, this song is called Blue Angel, written in 1968. Chet Atkins was actually a, a, did many things in the music industry, very successful in Nashville as a record producer, helped to invent what became known as the Nashville sound, kind of a real smooth and polished sound for country music, which helped expand the audience, you know, for country music. Um, Multi-Grammy Award winner and inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. So Chet Atkins, uh, very successful. And the thing about Chet Atkins was his technical abilities on the guitar are, are just extraordinary. And the way that he played, um, he could play the most complex pieces of music technically, but he made it look like it was the most simple, easy stroll in the park uh, that you could ever imagine. So um, whenever I play something by Chet Atkins, I always think of that and uh, do my best to, uh, to play it in a loose and carefree and easy way, just like Chet used to play. Although um, there is no one who will ever replace Chet Atkins. Um, his music is certainly fun to play and definitely challenging, too. So this is a song called Blue Angel, um, written by a composer from Brazil, a guitarist named Carlos Barbosa Lima, himself an outstanding musician. So hope you enjoy it. Okay, so our next tune is really a little jam. It's called Full House, and it's written and performed originally by Wes Montgomery. And it was recorded, uh, included in a live recording from 1962 by the same name. And so Wes Montgomery, very special. Um, I'm going to show you a book cover. This is my Wes Montgomery book that I got when I was 13. And in Sa I grew up in Sacramento and there was a music store that I used to hang around with some friends and I saw this book, Wes Montgomery. And I, I had heard of him, didn't know anything about Wes, but this book was had all of his solos written out and everything 
and it was presented so well. So I just, I, I picked it up and I'm still working out of this book today. Um, but, uh, West Montgomery. So, and you know, I had many guitar teachers, a few, you know, different guitar teachers at the time. And mostly when you're younger, you know, you learn to play strumming and finger picking and open position chords and things like that. And I ended up, I found a guitar teacher who was an older gentleman named Ray Gregory. And I was just a kid. I was like 13 and Ray Gregory was showing me all of these brand new chord voicings that I had never heard of before on the high strings and up higher on the guitar neck and unusual shapes and different sounds. And it turns out that he was showing me the West Montgomery chord voicings. And I didn't realize that at the time. And so I was getting these bits of information about this West Montgomery guitar style from different places early on and didn't know what it was and what to do with it until many, many years later. And so, um, you know, West Montgomery invented a style called octaves and was very adept at a, another style called chord melody where he would actually improvise using chords rather than single notes. Um, played a really large arch top jazz guitar called a Gibson L5 and had a really big, thick, warm tone to it. And uh, Wes played everything on his right hand with his thumb. And apparently he developed that because of a place where he was living. He, when he would practice with a pick, sometimes it was too loud and disrupted the neighbors and they continued to ask him to turn it down. And so he figured out that if he played with his thumb on the right hand, that it would produce a more quiet volume that would not disturb his neighbors. And in the process of doing that, he kind of discovered a whole uh, way to navigate using his thumb, literally just his thumb, didn't use his fingers much. And actually he could actually alternate pick up and down with his thumb. If you've ever tried that, you'll you'll know that it's just uh, very challenging to get that upstroke with your thumb. Anyway, uh, Wes Montgomery, and uh, so just a great uh, musician, great improviser as well. And, and this recording that you would listen to called Full House was really about the group interplay. So we're going to do our version of Full House for you. And uh, it actually features Gary Newmark in the middle on some just really amazing drum work. So here we go. Thank you. 
The next piece is called Travels, written by Pat Metheny. This is a little song uh, that was recorded live in 1983 uh, in Sacramento, actually. Um, and I believe that my friends and I actually attended this concert. Um, Pat is from the Midwest, from Missouri, and... Um, started, you know, was sort of a, got a really early start playing as a young person, playing with older musicians in Kansas City and immediately moved to the East Coast and lived in Florida and um, just had a really brilliant career from an early age. Started, I think his first solo album was at the age of 19 with Jocko Pistorius, the bass player, and Bob Moses was the drummer. Um, but his, I think most of his acclaim would be with his group called the Pat Metheny Group, which released many, many albums in the 80s and 90s, received many Grammy Awards for that. They were, uh, the philosophy that, that he used was that he was just going to be on the road a lot and touring a lot. And, and that's what they did. They just continued to tour internationally, uh, for many years, decades, really, building, you know, a really large audience, actually. Uh, and his partner was Lyle Mays, the pianist and composer. They were known for just brilliant uh, lyrical compositions and um, solo improvisations and, and that sort of thing. Um, I had been into <clears throat> sort of... Uh, popular music in the 80s with friends and we had bands and that sort of thing in Sacramento but we went to a Pat Metheny concert uh, when we were all about 16 and I had we just none of us had never heard anything like that and that was sort of pointed me in a different direction for the rest of my career and so Pat Metheny's always been a kind of a major influence on on me this song called Travels was one of my dad's favorite songs that I used to play 
for years and uh, he would come and hear me play and for some reason he always commented on this song so i like to play travels a lot um for that reason uh so here it is <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, the next song is Take Five, the Dave Brubeck song. Take Five, and this one was inspired by the way that George Benson used to play the song Take Five. And so um, George Benson, the exciting, dazzling blues man, and uh, George Benson had a just a fiery, you know, ability and sound and style, played a lot of blues and even kind of rocked out a bit on his jazz guitar. And so, um, but just masterful uh, single lo line improvisations and notes and just terrific. Of course, and George is also known as a vocalist. Uh, he developed his vocal style as a kid, actually, uh, growing up. He was a singer, I guess, before he was a guitar player. Um, but he did partner with Quincy Jones in, in, in the 1980s and 90s, and they produced some really uh, just fantastic records. You know, um, This Masquerade was one of those songs, and Breezin', and just some really big hits, you know, from that era. And George is still playing, you know, um, he was just has a new uh, new release actually in 2020. Um, and he's been at it for a long time and still sounding just dynamic and terrific. So it's always a thrill to hear George Benson and think about his playing and have an opportunity to play some of his tunes. So here we go. Take five. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
The next two songs are originals that I had recorded. Um, the first one is called Take a Look, and it was recorded in 2001 on a record called Collage uh, that we had made. Um, and it was recorded in a beautiful little studio in Hollywood that was run by Steve Tyrell at the time. And we recorded this on two inch tape and it just was a tremendous experience to work in that studio and hear the, the quality of the audio that they were able to produce there. So um, take a look is the first song. And then the second one is called Get To It from 2008 uh, on a record I released at that time called The Road West. And this was a band from Sacramento and it was recorded there at the drummer's studio, Rick Lauder. And uh, this song is in the style of Eddie Harris, the saxophone player. And I think I was drawn to that because one of my teachers, Joe DiOrio, uh, had worked with Eddie Harris. And so I started listening to so many different albums and recordings by uh, Eddie Harris and um, just loved his, uh, his saxophone uh, world. Uh, the way that he played and phrased music on the saxophone. So I wrote this tune. It's called Get To It. Um, and that's it. So I hope you enjoy these two original tunes. Thank you. 
come to the end of our show and we have one more song for you but I did want to take a minute to say what a pleasure it was to work with the musicians and also our, our friends who have helped put this video together for you uh, John Laufenberger on bass and Gary Newmark on drums Rick Helzer on piano and the three of them have worked together for many many years and so it was a pleasure to work with each of them uh, and Bill Reeve helped with the video. Thank you, Bill. And Chuck Rulegi uh, offered his studio for us to record. And so thank you, Chuck. And what a pleasure it was. We had a wonderful day uh, recording and, and visiting and, and sharing the music. And um, of course, also thanks to Joe Lazama and Jazz Fresno and Jazz at the Library. Uh, Gary Newmark um, had promoted this idea for some time with me and I always thought what a brilliant idea thank you for for uh, letting me be a part of this Joe and uh, continued success and I wish you all the best we're going to close out tonight with uh, Corcovado Quiet Nights of Quiet Stars this is a Bossa Nova song from 1959 written by Antonio Carlos Jobim and uh, all the best and good night